and that's part of my job as a head coach is to navigate through this. And we've got a wonderful administration, a great university, a great support from everybody that's involved with this thing. So we're going to see our way through this thing, come out uh, bright just like we did last season. Uh, there's always obstacles along the way. I'm sure something else will happen and, and jump out at us. But uh, we're excited the direction uh, of the program is heading. Um, you know, I know the question will go ahead and get out, and I'll go ahead and answer it. You know, our, our, we are educating our guys about vaccinations. Okay, so I'll go ahead and answer that question for you guys. Uh, to give you guys an exact percentage, I'm not exactly sure, but I'll just say this. I really, really like the way we're trending, okay? And I, I'm really pleased with the, the positive results our guys are having uh, by listening and learning about the things that the vaccination can do to help our program, to help our city and our community to be safe and sound. So uh, our guys have been great about it. Like I said, I'm really pleased with the directions it's trending uh, with all that stuff. You know, a couple other things. Really pleased, you know, uh, some of us, we had an end of the year Zoom, uh, but to you know, be in person, I was pleased with the way last year ended. We always want to compete for a conference championship. That's always our goal. Uh, but to be bowl winners was great. You know, really pleased with some of the information that I wasn't able to share with you guys is we finished last year right, last semester with the highest GPA in team history, okay? So I'm really proud of our guys, uh, the focus that they performed uh, in the classroom. We're gonna get back, continue to do community service. We had people out uh, the other day. We haven't always put it out on uh, media availability, but uh, just pleased with everything. Our guys are working their tails off this summer, really excited. Uh, I think we're at 40 days or 39 days uh, before kickoff. So I've got that countdown. We're ready to roll and training camp's just around the corner. So with that being said, I'll open up for any questions. <laughs> Hey, Coach, you have a lot of good players, not only uh, skill-wise, but leadership-wise. You're going to have a big leadership board. So how do you feel the leadership board on all three teams, special team, defense, and offense? How do you feel that board is going? Yeah, absolutely. We're, look, there's a lot of uh, players that have played vital roles in our you know, offense, defense, special teams that are no longer with our program. And I looked back, and I was sitting there. I woke up this morning thinking about, man, opening day, even on offense, there's going to be a lot of new faces, and uh, that's okay. Um, but I think what we've seen is really, especially from spring football uh, to this off season, the way the guys are working, we're seeing leaders step up and uh, at every position. And there's some true freshmen that are they're working their tails off that are may not see the field, but are doing it the right way. They're providing leadership opportunities for the rest of the freshmen. We got some of those super seniors, if you will. Uh, they've been absolutely fantastic in, in their roles. And so I think we're just going to continue to see that grow. Like we know, we've got a lot of depth on defense this year. And uh, that's a great thing. You know, I don't know if we could have said that, you know, going into year six that I've been here, that we've had a ton of depth on defense. So really happy about that. Uh, we got a lot of guys on offense that know they're battling for positions. So that creates natural competition and leadership as well. Uh, but just really uh, pleased with that, right? A lot of new fresh faces on special teams. We certainly can't forget our, uh, the third of the, what we want to get done on the field. And, um, you know, Coach Bankins has done a fantastic job implementing his philosophy, his belief, and his cultures. We're going to see a lot of schematics that uh, look very similar to what we've done in the past because we have had success. But to go back to it, uh, you know, we'll have a new kicker and a new punter. And uh, excited about that. You know, just another new face that you guys are going to have to learn along the way. So Brian mentioned about, you mentioned about the belief and expectations. You know, this, this is here now. And it has been so long that it wasn't. And now you've been to, what, seven bowl games in a row. The expectations that... The, the kids that come into this program now, it, it, it means something that just much more to know that, you know, it can. Yeah, absolutely. You know, look, I, I, I'll be the first to admit that the history of this program, the long story history, and then just what you said, like we said, with seven straight bowl games, I always give credit to the, the guy that came before me and Coach Norvell and Fuente and all those guys that even built the groundwork. Uh, you know, I share stories with Tommy West and Rip Shear about they would have recruiting visits and they'd leave a bull, rent a bulldozer out there or a tractor trailer, leave it out there for the recruiting visit and say there's an indoor coming next week and they'd return it as recruiting was, was done. So look, credit to all those that came before us, um, but we know there's high expectations here and I love it. And that's one of the reasons, you know, when I sat here, uh, you know, and took this job and was in front of a lot of you faces that that's what makes this place so special. I'm glad there's high expectations. We wouldn't want anything else and our players know it. And, uh, from having new facilities, right? A beautiful indoor facility, which I'm so glad that you guys get to share with the rest of our community and be able to see with your own eyes today. And, you know, I, our, our players, I understand th there's a lot to be expected. Like I said, our, our goal every year at minimum is to go to a bowl game and what we want to compete for conference championships, um, whatever that looks like. But I can promise you this, you're going to get the best effort from our team. You know, you're a former Tiger, you know how much it means 
uh, to see your guys go out there and have success uh, in everything they do, not just on the field. And we're going to continue to push that way and, and push that envelope and, and raise our bar as high as we can uh, to continue to make this university, uh, our city, proud. Right. So with the, with our, I mean, you know, quarter of about to be the big story here. So I guess for you, um, do you kind of have an idea in mind from the spring kind of how well things went? And do you have an, a date in mind maybe when – you kind of want to have something maybe decided about this before September fourth. Yeah, you know, Evan. I think what we saw is, uh, like I've mentioned, we've got four quarterbacks that we believe are truly competing for the starting job, and all four bring something different to the table. I know I've answered that, and you guys have said, what are the different tangibles that they bring, skill sets, and they're four different guys. They truly are from a from an age, from a growth potential to what they're able to provide on the field. You know, there's days that I'd say, man, this guy looks really good and sharp. And the next day, I'm like, oh, my gosh, we can't go out on the field with him yet. You know, so I think that ebb and flows of spring ball. We saw that a lot of positions, uh, whether it's a, a true freshman that just graduated high school that was out there slinging the ball, or whether it was uh, Calvin Austin who was continuing to work on his route running, right? We're going to see the ups and downs in spring. Now I'm excited to see what they've been able to do the last two months, really, in conditioning in the weight room, especially that quarterback position, to see what unfolds in training camp. And the reality is is a true quarterback competition, and I think um, – you know, say, or say, well, you must really know. No, I don't. And that's the, the kind of the good thing is the good news is I'm not scrambling to the transfer portal when we end this press conference to go try to find another quarterback. I really like what we have on our roster. I feel comfortable with all four guys that are competing. Uh, as far as naming a date, look, if, if within two weeks of training camp or the first week we know who it is, great, I'll be happy to um, because then allow us to get reps with some of the other guys that may be at that that position with him, right? If it's a second string quarterback, well, he may need to get work with some of those second string guys as well. Um, but with that being said, if, if it takes three weeks, or if we just happen to, you know, just want to surprise you guys the, the, the day of the game uh, when we open up the Liberty Bowl, that may be the case. No, but reality, we're just going to throw them out there and, and see what shakes up and uh, uh, excited to watch that battle grow. How much of that is a feel, just your own eyes knowing, okay, this is what I'm seeing in talking with Kevin? Uh, as far as, yeah, this guy looks like, or, or with the player's input, you know, you see them in the huddle. You see how they react to whoever it is calls. Yeah, you know, I think that's one of those things that you have to be able to get a good feel of everything, right? It may not be just the guy that says, comes to you and says, well, coach, I went 10 of 11 today in practice, right? Or, man, I completed all these balls. Or I've only thrown one interception. Well, it may have been, you know, some of those guys go 10 for 11, maybe for 12 yards, and well, we got to push the ball down the field a little bit more. I think, Jarvis, that's one of those things is we have to be able to get the full feel of it. Ultimately, it's my decision uh, to make and say who gives us the best chance uh, to have success and win football games. Um, but leadership, right, intelligence, all those things, right, who can the players follow? And I think all that has to be thrown into the mix, right? I'm going to watch closely exactly right, the eyes in the huddle, who's paying attention, who's taking command of different things, right? Put them in different situations, two-minute situations, end of the game, right? The new overtime rules. Put them in as many different situations. Put the pressure on them so when game time comes, we have a good understanding. But, yeah, you're exactly right. I think it's also getting a natural feel. Hey, this guy can do these things. What else can they bring to the table? Is this guy a runner? Is he a better throw? And, and kind of get a final mix. And that's why I said we've got guys with uh, all different types of backgrounds and intangibles, um, but they're all positive things that we're excited You know, look, it's uh, that's an interesting question, Jeff, because the reality of it is it will affect our conference, college football as a whole, and it's another change that's occurring. And so the only constant is change. You know, I'm not trying to quote some famous philosopher because I certainly couldn't do that. Um, but the reality of it is is it's what's coming. And what, what good will it do me now these next 10 days to worry about? I can't. And, you know, look, I would love – Let's have this conversation in January, and I can say, yeah, I, I like this direction, right? Anything that's good for our game, I'm all for, right? There's things that have occurred in college football that may or may not be best for what, the professional development of coaches, for our players, things that have occurred. But conference realignment, it's one of those things that's occurred throughout the history of football, throughout college football, that occurs in the NFL. Um, so we knew it was coming. It, is it going to occur, and how will it affect the University of Memphis? I don't know. Have I had some conversations with uh, Dr. Ron Laird Beach? At very minimum, like I said, you know, it, it does me no good to sit here and stress about what's going to happen in 2025 right now, right? I'm trying to get through tomorrow and make sure our guys show up for the workouts and do what they're supposed to be doing. So, um, my fan of it, look, it, it, I'll I'll let you know in 2025. How's that? <laughs> uh, but no, look, well, the, the nice thing is, 
regardless of whatever happens when it happens and not to dwell too far into this i mean you can't talk about a better time for our university and their athletic programs to be showcased i mean you, you talk about uh the things that right trying to reach the carnegie status right from an academic standpoint for our program reaching its highest gpa right to having a world famous basketball coach and their success we're really excited about our women's basketball coach. the rest of the sports are doing well all these things facilities and we have a thriving city that continues to do better and better. And so all those things, you put it all together, a city under development is continuing to strive. The sky's the limit for what can happen. Now, whether that's uh, some new conference that's made up, perfectly happy in the AAC, we know how competitive where we are right now is. And so uh, to be honest, in 10 days, I won't give it another thought and uh, we'll be ripping roaring and, uh, and, and happy exactly where we're at. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, absolutely. I'm, I, I've made no bones about it. We had this conversation, I believe, on Zoom a few months ago when we did one of those things. And I believe the expanded playoff is good for college football because I've seen it firsthand, right, at a place like Memphis that, man, the opportunities in this conference to showcase these teams, right? I, I go back and look at when Houston played in some New York six days. New York, New Year six, I always do that wrong. But I think I got, you got me on the, the one the other day, right? You know, what, what Houston was able to do, right? What UCF, what we were able to do, right? Even Cincinnati. So I think any time these teams, they're capable. It may be a Boise State one year. Whoever it may be, need to be showcased on a national level. And I think they're, we're starting to see there's a little bit of parity in some of these conferences. And, uh, yeah, I'm a fan of the big fan of playoffs for sure. Yeah, you know, so the biggest thing that us as a coaching staff can do is, and as an administration, is educate, okay? And when we educate, that's really one of those things. That's all we can do. Well, we can't negotiate deals. We can't tell them they need to go reach out to this person or that person. What we can do is just have those discussions and say, hey, here's what this is about, right? And here's what our university is doing. We had Laird Veach, Jeff Crane talk to them. We've also done Zoom meetings with Open Doors. We've done all those things to continue to try to educate. Has it affected me on a day-to-day? No, you know, some recruits may ask about what we have in place and we send them some information, the education our, some of our players do. And really for me, because I'm, I'm not an expert at this at all, and I'm learning just like you guys are. I've read through legislation after legislation, trying to figure this out myself and navigate through it. Uh, as a university, we're continuing to be trying to be on the front end of this thing. I think it'll be benefit, like I just mentioned with us being a city of over a million people. There's a lot of opportunity for our student athletes here, and I'm, I'm happy that it's occurring. What it will look like, I think we're all still trying to figure out, right? We know state by state has each legislation their own. Um, but I, our players, if they're, they, they seem to be happy with it and pleased with it. Uh, and I know there's guys that have certain deals that may have may not made it publicly of, of things that are occurring, right? I don't know if a guy's going to get a free sandwich and promote it just because they're getting the free sandwich for whatever they, you know, sign autographs or whatever it may be. But uh, uh, I'm pleased with it. And I, I think like a lot of these things, Stephen, we're just going to continue to learn more and more. I mean, it's, it's the ever-changing of, of college football, college athletics, as we know it. You, you mentioned before the positioning of this university. When you look at this conference, when realignment comes up, you know they've always they've always had the mantra of Power Six. Is this conference in the best position, maybe that it's been in, if realignment rears up and and, and things happen? Where do you, where do you think the conference stands in the yeah. landscape right now? Absolutely, Mike. I think we're as as strong as a conference as we've ever been. And I think, like I just said, you look over the history of what's occurred, even since I've been at Memphis, right? From the, what Houston was able to do for a couple of years, right? From UCF to Memphis to Cincinnati, right? Like you kind of see, there's enough quality teams. There's nobody looks at our conference and says, wow, that's a, that's a cupcake team in the conference. Uh, look what some of these schools in our conference are doing in recruiting and, and beating a lot of these quote unquote power five programs. So that's the unique thing. I think our conference is in a great position for whatever may occur. Uh, whether it even just be a, uh, a normal playoff year, uh, the push to be able to continue to compete at the highest level, and I think we're going to see that again this year. Look at our players that are getting drafted. Uh, look what's occurring uh, day in and day out in our conference, week in and week out with the scheduling. Um, you know, there's a lot of tough games out there, and then we get to conference play, it, it certainly doesn't lighten up. So uh, I'm really pleased with where our conference is at um, and whatever direction that we may head as a conference, uh, I'll support and, and figure it out as the road. As, a, as it all unfolds. Coach, what should be the expectation of this team this year? Because we don't know what the quarterback situation will be. We don't know the special team situation. What are realistic expectations for the season?
Yeah, you know, look, I'm not going to put any – sit there and say, hey, we got to win this number of games, all that stuff. Like I said, our number one goal should be to compete for the conference championship every year. As long as I'm the head football coach here, that's going to be our, our expectations and our goals. And But to compete for a bowl game, right? We should be in a bowl game every single year. So is that a 13-win season? I don't know. Is that, is that Whatever that looks like, we'll, we'll see as the season goes on. And – uh, we do have some question marks, that's for sure, right? It was always easier when we say, hey, we got Pax Lynch, we got Riley Ferguson, we got Brady White. Cool, at least we can roll our dice and see out there. I, I do think, like I said, the cupboard's not bare. Uh, we like what we have. Uh, but, I, I, you know, we'll, we'll know a lot about this team just in the non-conference games um, because it's an it's a interesting slate, to say the least. Uh, we got a lot of tough opponents, and then uh, we, we've seen it, right? I mean, I've, I've been a part one of our most talented teams uh, a couple years ago, that I would was one of our most talented teams, and we went eight and six. And, you know, you can say it was a good year or wasn't, but, I mean, you look at that roster, there's some dudes on that roster. And that's my job is to get our roster to be as low as we can. We need to be at the front end of the AAC as far as talent was. And we, we continue to try to do that in recruiting, but that's 1,000% on me. And the word that we used that I said, I told you guys a year ago, roster management. And gosh darn, it's, it's reared its ugly head, and it, it's here with us to stay. And uh, that's part of our job is to continue to bring in the best type players that fit what we want to get done. What, what is the position or positions that you are most confident in? You know, uh, we got pretty good long snappers. <laughs> uh, now, look, I, like I said, I, I truly believe I love our depth of our defense. I mean, I really do. You know, and even, you know, I think our secondary is as deep as it's ever been in our linebacker core. You look at some of those names back there, I mean, you could go a full rotation of, of those guys that are, are our defense, right? And then we can't forget, right, John Tate missed all last year. Our defense alignments play a lot of quality snaps for us, right, for, through injury. He'll be back this year. So even our D-line's starting to feel like we can get some rotation. I think that's one of those things. If we have that type of depth on defense, it will allow us to have success. I think our offensive line's going to be much improved. Everyone's going to say, well, who's your starting running back? That's a great question. we got guys that... Uh, I think last year we started six different running backs, right? Versus Navy, we started a walk-on running back because uh, where we're at. Um, and hopefully, right, whatever we put out there is going to be a product that we're all going to be proud of. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you, guys. Appreciate y'all coming.